During its 10 years on Mars, Curiosity discovers an ancient stream bed, captures some creepy images at night, and discovers brilliant particles on the Martian surface. On August 6, 2012, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter just so happened to be in the perfect location at the perfect moment to snap this amazing photo of the Curiosity rover landing by parachute on the surface of Mars. Curiosity opens its eyes after a tense but successful landing. The peak in the distance, known as Mount Sharp unofficially, will ultimately begin to climb. But for the time being, the rover will head away from Mount Sharp and towards Glenelg, a fascinating area. On Sol 13, or the 13th Martian day of the mission, Curiosity inspects a spot that was damaged by the engines of its descent stage. These sedimentary rocks, known as Goulburn Scour, are considered to have been deposited by flowing water in the distant past and exposed by the descending stage when it blasted away the surface dust. On Sol 16, Curiosity closely examines the layers that make up Mount Sharp's base because researchers believe they may hold yet another hint about an earlier period of flooding. On Sol 27, Curiosity finds a location that might once more be connected to flowing water. A sedimentary conglomerate, a type of geological structure produced by streams and rivers on Earth, is what is depicted in this image. The NASA engineers examine the wheels of Curiosity. They appear to be enduring fairly well so far. The rover discovers yet another instance of a Martian stream on Sol 39. This exposed bedrock is made up of tiny pieces that have been joined by cement. Due to the rounded features of the bedrock itself, as well as the rounded rocks and pebbles all around it, this is most likely proof of ancient water. These circular rocks might have been brought here by flowing water and put there. If locating three locations that were probably created by rushing water wasn't enough proof, simply take a look at how they are set up. The ancient stream's direction is shown by the yellow arrows at each location. This map depicts the rover's path thus far, but Curiosity turns around in this amazing mosaic to once more take in the view of the majestic Mount Sharp. It will be challenging, but worthwhile, to climb the mountain. When Curiosity comes across an intriguing pyramid-shaped rock, it believes that now would be a good moment to put its onboard laser to the test. The dots in this image show where Curiosity focused its laser, producing results that have never before been observed on Mars. The rock is remarkably close to a rare yet common rock type found on Earth and features a diversity of minerals down to the smallest scales. For the first use of Curiosity's scoop, a location called Rockniest is chosen along the route to Glenelg. A good scoop sample should be found in the area of sand that is located downhill from the collection of dark rocks. The rover finds an unusual rock at the location. The origin of the tiny cavities found in the sandstone is unknown. Curiosity performs its first scoop on Sol 61. Sand of a darker hue is seen just below the surface. After shaking, the sample will now go through a filter. This photo displays the filter. Any particles that are too large to fit through this filter after the shaking process are returned to the scoop for a visual examination. These bigger particles are seen in this image. As the presence of the first sample in the scoop aids in further decontaminating all surfaces coming into direct touch with subsequent samples, it will not be fully processed. The NASA team discovers an intriguing piece of Martian surface debris on Sol 65, right next to the rover. This close-up demonstrates that it is most likely from the spacecraft and may have been caused by the landing. Most likely, it is a harmless scrap of plastic or shrink tube from a terminated wire. During the second scoop, Curiosity may observe a bright particle in the sample hole. The NASA team instructs the rover to likewise reject the second sample since spacecraft debris has been found nearby. The rover might pick up germs from Earth if any of these light particles are from the spacecraft and are then fed into the internal sampling device. More brilliant particles are discovered on the ground, though, and the team now thinks these are native to the Martian soil after more observation and research. 
These brilliant specks most likely contain silica or some naturally occurring mineral. With this knowledge, the rover proceeds to take a third, completely processed scoop. According to the results of the soil sample, water makes up roughly 2% of the material that was taken. When the sample is heated by the rover, gases such carbon dioxide, oxygen, and sulfur are released. The rover takes a short break from sampling to celebrate by taking this breathtaking panorama of the rockiest region. Glenelg will be the next stop for curiosity. The rover finds a location known as Shaler on Sol 120. The spectacular layering of the Shaler outcrop indicates the presence of water in the distant past once more. This particular area, known as the sheepbed locality, exhibits well-defined veins packed with what is most likely calcium sulfate and is white in color. The rover enters Yellowknife Bay, a larger region, and explores the surroundings. The white arrows in this annotated image denote mineral veins, whereas the black arrows denote mineral concretions. Concretions and veins are both reliable signs of mineral precipitation from water. Curiosity's drill will be used for the first time on John Klein, a target drilling site. This hard, level bedrock should provide for an excellent testing surface. NASA engineers are setting up for the first drill when Curiosity notices a little, fragmented rock they have dubbed Tintina. The mass cam on Curiosity is used to analyze spectra and create a map of the mineral hydration. The findings demonstrate that the rock's inside is significantly more hydrated than its exterior. Curiosity is given the go-ahead to stay up all night. These are the first photos taken at night from the Martian surface. To determine whether any fluorescent minerals are present, the team will examine the rocks under UV lighting. Unfortunately, there isn't much evidence for luminous minerals in this shot, which was taken under UV lighting. We would notice intensely colored red, blue, or orange regions if they were there. On Sol 174, Curiosity runs over a rock and splits it in half. Curiosity's clumsiness accidentally reveals a very light substance inside the rock, which is a happy accident. The presence of silica, which is frequently found on Mars, is most likely to blame for this. Before its huge drill test at the John Klein site, Curiosity snaps a selfie. Drilling proceeds and is a huge success. The scoop receives the drill sample and transfers it to the internal sampling system on Curiosity. Curiosity stops responding to orders on Sol 200. Engineers worry that Curiosity is in a boot loop, which will drain its battery and render it useless. Fortunately, Curiosity has two computers on board side A and side B, or the pilot and co-pilot for just such a situation. If the pilot fails, the rover is programmed to automatically switch to the co-pilot. But the co-pilot is not given control because the pilot has different ideas. The engineers are concerned that the pilot might suddenly turn off the radio, in which case they would never again hear from the rover. They make the dangerous decision to turn off the pilot in the hopes that the co-pilot will subsequently assume control. The team turns off the pilot and waits for the co-pilot to signal, which ought to happen right away. A minute goes by with no signal. Still no signal after four minutes. When the signal eventually arrives, it is obvious that the co-pilot is now in command. Curiosity can exhale with relief and carry on with its work. The team needs to double-check all the systems now that the rover is on the B-side. Now that everything is operating as it should, Curiosity embarks on a lengthy journey. This photo was taken on Sol 343 and depicts the road in front of Curiosity. Twin Cairns is the name given to the two gray rocks in the center. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for the latest updates on discoveries.